economy, mm -hmm. people are really looking into other areas of sparkling wine. What are some of your favorites and, and why do you like those regions? Well, the first rule with that is that just like we said, Champagne is a place, a place dedicated to sparkling wine. When you're looking for sparkling wines outside of that region, you should look to places that that's what they do. You know, they're dedicated to sparkling wine. Places like Cava in Spain is a region dedicated to sparkling wine. Northern Italy has Franciacorta, great sparkling wines. Trento, also not, not as famous, but also very nice. And even the Loire Valley. The Loire Valley is very close to Champagne. Completely different style, different varietals, but they make a huge uh, volume of sparkling wine. And so it would be absurd to say that there aren't other sparkling wines made outside of Champagne that are very, very good quality. Indeed, right. we know that there are several that make beautiful sparkling wines. domestic favorites that you have? To be honest with you, it might, might surprise you, but I think the best sparkling winemaker in the U.S. is in Michigan. Is that uh, right? <laughs> Larry What's... Malby, uh, his name's Larry Malby, he makes El Malby sparkling up in Leland Alt Peninsula. And cool. the reason I say that is not because he has the best terroir or the best history, but because he is solely dedicated to making sparkling wine. And you can see it in his grapes, you can see it in his bottles, you can see it in his love for the wine. Now we're starting to see that Americans are beginning to drink more rosé, mm -hmm. um, which I think is fabulous. You know, there was this misperception that these pink wines were feminine, that they were mm -hmm. insignificant, they were it didn't have the quality, and and that's absolutely not true. That's probably been the single biggest um, trend in the last five years for champagne and sparkling wine has been rosé. Um, it definitely did start out with with women. Um, but uh, everyone's come around, and when you go to Champagne specifically, the rosés tend to be the more serious wines very often. Right, and, and in many cases are priced higher Much so. because of that. Uh, well, that also, has the, uh, that also comes a lot from the, the, the rarity of them, because uh, with rosé and Champagne, you have to blend red wine, and that red wine has to come from Champagne. Right. So, so they can either make it by adding a still red wine, mm -hmm. and there are a few houses that are still doing it by skin content. Senier, right. right, yeah, they do the Senier method. Um, but because that, if you are blending that red line, f far and more, most of them do the, the blending method. Um, and if you are blending that red wine, that red wine itself has to come from Champagne. And there's so little red wine made in Champagne that it, it drives up the price. Now, are you able to sell large formats? I mean, we see, still see people, you know, buying one of the, the regular 750 bottles at a time, but I love the large formats. I think there's nothing better for a party, and, and I often find that the wines age better. Absolutely, and Magnums, the double bottle, two bottles in one, Magnums, I think, are made for champagne. And if you talk to any champagne wall, they would tell you that if they could, they would bottle everything in Magnum. Um, specifically with champagne, there is the ratio of the, the, the auto, auto, autolytic factor, the yeast, all the dead yeast cells that are in there kind of flavoring the wine as it ages, right? Um, uh, Magnum has the perfect ratio to get a slow, very, very rich development. Very often I'll, I'll pour a seven, I'll have a 750 and a Magnum in front of my staff of the exact same wine from a similar disgorgement, similar year that it was taken out of the cellar. And it's remarkable the difference in the Magnum. It's richer, it's deeper, it's more mature, uh, it's a whole different wine. I had a, a lunch with Christian Paul Roger not too long ago from Paul Roger. I think he told me it was his father or grandfather said that the appropriate amount of champagne for two gentlemen to drink during lunch is a Magnum. And I'm not doing that as often as I like, <laughs> but I certainly aspire to that lifestyle. Well, thank you for the history. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, let's spend a little time helping our audience learn to understand how to properly match food with sparkling wine.